Hi, I'm Scott Flowers from Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 9 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on network cards. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on network cards, so we're going to go over a whole bunch in this video. The first thing that I wanted to point out is that there's different form factors for your network card. You have your FLOM, which is your flexible LOM, and you have a PCIe version. So let me show you real quick, and we'll do a close-up in a minute. So your FLOM, which looks like this, it almost kind of even looks like a mini PCIe, has a special carved-out designated slot in the back that when we install it, we'll show you in a minute, that is for your FLOM. Now again, with the, uh, kind of like when we talked about in the RAID video, with the um, DL380, uh, Gen 9 server, you don't, you, you have so many PCIe slots in the back, you don't necessarily need to worry about conserving your PCIe slots. Now, if this was a 1U, it'd be a little bit more important, uh, and you definitely want to use the FLOM with your 1Us, but with the, the 380 Gen 9, again, you have six PCIe slots in the back, you don't need to worry so, so much about preserving them. And if you're using all of them, hey, drop a comment down below because I always love to hear what people are using them for. So anyhow, but we're going to show you how to install your PCIe version and your FLOM. We'll do a close-up of them as a whole. We'll go over the different speeds and the different interfaces. So what are the different interfaces to start with? Well, you have RJ45, which is just another way of saying Ethernet. You have SFP, SFP+, Plus, QSFP, QSFP26, and QSFP26. 56. So what are the different speeds? Well, you have 1 gigabit, you have 8 gigabit, you have 10, 16, 25, 32, 40, or all the way up to 100. So yeah, there are a bunch of different speeds as a whole. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the types, let's go ahead and hop in and show you how to install them. I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, so just a quick view. wanted to show you your FLOMs versus your PCIEs in the back. And again, you can have RJ45, SFP+, all the different uh, combinations that we showed you, the different speeds, right? But again, the FLOMs are all up here, and your PCIEs are back here. We're going to show you how to install both of them right now. All right, so we have our FLOM and our PCIe. And one thing I did want to point out with the PCIe, uh, you do need to make sure you have a high-profile bracket. I did have the low-profile one specifically to remind me to tell you to make sure you have the high-profile one. And I didn't think about it until I was clearing them off. But make sure you have a high-profile bracket. That is what you will need for the 380 Gen 9, and hopefully that helps someone at home. So now let's show you how to actually install these bad boys right now. So just pop your latch. and we're going to come back here. So the first one I'm going to do is the PCIe version. So similar to when you saw us uh, install on the RAID video, we're going to need to remove our riser back here. So you're just going to twist this and unscrew it here. So just going to pop this up, twist this, and you'll feel the spring come up. And then once you've done that, this is actually loose. And it's kind of a pain to remove. It doesn't come out easy. So just know that you might have to use a little good old fashioned elbow grease here to actually remove this card, okay? Or remove this riser, I should say. All right, so now we are gonna open our uh, blue tab here so that we can remove out our brackets. So just gonna push this down and then pull it back this way. So just push this down and pull this back. I'm gonna remove the middle one right here, okay? And now we have everything set up. So what we're gonna need to do is we're going to line up three different things. So the tip needs to go in down here and then your two points right here on your uh, actual leads. And then the PCIe is gonna go into the green part in the back. So let's just go ahead and line everything up right now. Okay, so once we get it to this point, you'll see it's ready to go, and we're just going to push this down, and everything is lined up and good to go. And then we're just going to take our blue, push it down, it's locked into place, and now it's firmly in there, and we're just going to reinstall our riser. So you're going to come back here, line up your backs, slide this straight down, make sure you don't get any cables in the way. Once you have it all lined up, you're just going to push this in and again, you might have to use a little bit of elbow grease, I'm not saying being forceful, but just make sure you use enough force to actually get it in. And then you're just going to push this down and lock this into place. And so that is how you install your PCIe version. All right, so now we're gonna to need to come over here to install our FLOM. This is actually gonna be pretty similar as a whole. We're going to take 
are pieces right here that have the spring. We're just going to twist them and you're going to feel the spring come up and now you can actually remove the first riser. Now if I were to remove this right now, these cables just do not have the slack that you need. You, know, you can kind of make it work, but you really, to me, it's easier. I'm going to go ahead and just pop this cable out and this cable out because those are the ones that have the least amount of flexibility from our RAID card. The rest of them have a little bit of slack where I can kind of fold this over and if you want to remove all of them and then just replug them back in I get that too uh, to each their own but that's how I'm going to do it is I'm just going to remove these two and then I can kind of again fold this over and I have enough slack from the rest of them. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up. And now that I have this up, again, I'm just going to kind of fold this over right here. And now we're going to install back here our FLOM. So if you notice, the FLOM has this designated port. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our card and we're going to line up our leads and we're going to install them down here. But before we can do that, there's actually a little... Uh, bracket that's in the way that's there for airflow that we're going to have to remove first. So we are going to grab our screwdriver. So I grab my screwdriver and this is going to be your T10 bit. So just make sure you have a T10 bit, not your normal Phillips head, but a T10. So back here there's just one screw. It's uh, nice and easy. You're just going to unscrew this. And when you unscrew it, you're going to actually pop out this bracket right here. So that bracket, again, is great for airflow if you don't have an FLOM and you definitely want it in there because you don't want a bunch of debris and junk getting in there, but you need to remove it when you are installing your FLOM. So now, All right, so now we're going to actually install our FLOM. And one of the things I'll note is this is not a great design as far as uh, being able to install it. You're supposed to have enough space back here to push on these blue spots, but you're really not going to have enough space. Uh, at least my fingers don't fit. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the interface, we're going to line this up and push this in. And then we're going to line up our two leads. And again, you're supposed to be able to get your fingers back here. Mine don't fit, so I use the heat sink, which I'm not a fan of because I'm not trying to damage the part, but it's kind of what you have to do. And you're going to line this up, and you have to actually push a little harder than I would like. But once you get it in, you can fit your fingers in once it's in, but not beforehand. But you got it fully in. We're going to just take our uh, T10 again. We're just going to line it up right here, and we're just going to go ahead and screw our screw in to the motherboard and now your FLOM is fully installed. So we'll just put our riser back on and then we'll be in good shape to move forward. So uh, if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built HPE, Super Micro, IBM, Dell, if you're looking for full full built server servers, if you want uh, spare parts, we can overnight, we're quick, we're fast. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudinch.com. That's sales at cloudinch.com. And hey, thanks again for stopping by.